Welcome to Bud Light Hog Talk here on 23.2 Antenna TV. I'm Slav Kobekvich, first joined by Ice Hogs assistant coach Ben Simon. This week we are at Onyx Bar and Grill in Machesley Park, Illinois. Our next episode will be February 11th, so a bit of a break here as the team goes on the road. A lot of road games in the month of February there, Si. Yeah, it's coming up, and uh, we haven't had a, we've had a pretty easy schedule with regard to road games, so it'll be good to get down the road and travel as a team. We'll talk more about the February schedule after the relatively easy January home schedule a little bit later on. But first, uh, going back to this last week, three games starting Wednesday, Grand Rapids, and then Friday, Grand Rapids on the road Saturday. Uh, let's start with that Wednesday night game. It was a relatively big game. At that point, Grand Rapids had a seven-point lead on Milwaukee and Rockford in the Midwest Division. That was the highest lead in all of the AHL. That's how tight it's been throughout the entire league. Um, it wasn't necessarily a must-win game. But it was a close game until that third period where things kind of unraveled and ultimately a 6-3 loss. Yeah, no, it was close. And uh, unfortunately, a couple breaks, uh, breakdowns in systems. And uh, we just kind of lost control of it. And it ended up being a 6-3 to three final. So it wasn't, uh, wasn't what we were looking for. But I think the, the score wasn't indicative of how close the game truly was in the first couple periods. Peck and I talked about that during the broadcast. You know, the first two periods, we fell behind 2 nothing, got back to 2-2 in the second period. Uh, in our opinion, that the kind of deal breaker was that late goal by Shane at the end of the second period. I think it was like 18:40 or something into the period, and then you go into the third period after gaining all that momentum, kind of a little bit deflating. Yeah. Well, anytime you give up a goal with a, you know a minute, minute and a half left in any period, it, you're going into the locker room a little bit dejected, a little bit, you know just kind of beat up and you, you don't want to go into, into periods uh, like that. But it's on the other side, too. If you score a goal on that, it gives you a little bit of momentum going into the next period. So it just wasn't, uh, wasn't what we were looking for at that point. It just kind of snowballed from there. The Griffins generally against the Ice Hogs don't do so well. The Ice Hogs perennially are a winning team against the Griffins, whether it's at the BMO or on the road at Van Andel Arena. Not the case this year. What is different about this year's Griffins team that the Ice Hogs have struggled so much with? If I had that answer, we'd change that. But, uh, no, you know, they're a very highly skilled team. They've got a great group of forwards up front with Nyquist, Tatar, and uh, Anderson up front there. And they also have uh, Riley Sheehan and Ferraro who are playing well. And, uh, you know, they're quick in transition, a very good skating team. And you know, they, they have the capability of playing hard nose and gritty as well. So I think they've got a good balance. And uh, I think their forwards and their power play have been tremendous this year. And I think that's what's scaring them. You know, not to uh, kind of toot the horn of the opponent so much, but you know, the Red Wings do such a great job of really letting guys develop at their own pace. And now with the lockout being over, and we'll talk about that later, about some of the guys that are now have been recalled to Chicago for the Blackhawks. Tatar and Nyquist, you can argue those guys are NHL ready a year ago, and they're still down in Grand Rapids still working on their craft. Yeah, well, it's all time and place. And you know, they're, they're great players and maybe in a different organization. They might be in the NHL now, but obviously Detroit up top in the NHL is a very deep team, and They've got a lot of talent up top, too, but, you know, there's no question they've had guys in the past that, you know, uh, Yuri Hudler, when he was with the, the Griffins before, he spent a lot of, I think, extra time, I say extra time, where with or other organizations he might have been called up to the NHL earlier, but you know, their time will come, and I'm sure uh, both those guys and some other guys will turn out to be great Red Wings in the future. And now you know this, obviously, too well as a coach. In all six meetings the Ice Hogs and Griffins have played, the Ice Hogs have fallen behind one nothing in the first period. In five of those games, Grand Rapids has scored within the first two minutes and 16 seconds. Then, And that happened again on Friday night with the Ice Hogs losing on Wednesday, looking for revenge. 27 seconds into the game, Gustav Nyquist picks up a rebound, easy goal. And you're probably thinking, oh, God, not again. Yeah, no, we, uh, that's actually something we talked about before the game on Friday, getting off to a good start. And we actually changed up a few things with our uh, – pregame rituals and our meetings and with the players regard to warming up for the game and so we thought okay we made a few changes it should you know spark them get them a little bit more prepared have them more involved early and we let that go up so we're all like oh boy this is we made a few changes for the worse but you know those things do happen and we uh we clawed back and made it made it a better result than uh, than wednesday it was a kind of a tough bounce I guess you could say it was a nice shot there from Tatar on the wing and it was a pad save by Hutton he let it go on a big rebound and Nyquist unfortunately was all alone on the opposite side and he, he buried it one nothing 27 seconds in after that debacle in the third period the night before I'm sure things weren't looking too good on the bench but then you guys settled down like you said and then you flipped the script on them in the third period with four huge goals uh the Morin goal was a big one but uh, Brandon Sadi ultimately got the game winner and he had himself one heck of a weekend yeah, he did have a, had a great week, and obviously he was uh, named today Player of the Week in the AHL. So, 
You know, it, it, we don't want to give up a goal in the first minute, and the, the goal that you're talking about was kind of a fluke. Uh, you know, the shot that the initial shot that Tatar took was kind of a bouncing puck, and Hutz was kind of fooled on it and just kind of meaty rebound. But uh, it, you know, not not exactly what we were looking for. But we we battled back, and I think our guys didn't panic, which I think is a good sign that even though that does happen, I I hate to say it, our guys are used to that and being in that situation. So I think that that kind of helped. The nice thing is they have been playing really good hockey all season in the third period, and those four goals obviously helped them, propelled them to a win. Uh, Saad, like you said, winning player of the week. He had four points Friday night, and then you guys go on the road Saturday in Milwaukee. He gets the overtime game winner. It was three on three, so maybe a little bit more open ice for him, but uh, you know, that's one of the goals, and that's one of the things that Brandon Saad does, that goal just kind of outworking everybody else on the ice. And it's part of the reason why he got the recall yesterday to uh, to go up to the Blackhawks for training camp. Yeah, I know he's been playing well, and uh, the goal he scored the overtime winner was what Brandon Saad is, is good at. He uses his body. He's got a big frame, big body, and to put himself in the position where the opponent can't get the puck is one of his assets. And he did that. The puck was dumped in the corner, out-muscled a guy, put himself in a good position, and made a good move and tucked home the winner. On Friday night, we talked about it being a very important game against Grand Rapids. Did the team feel any added pressure, or did you get, kind of get the sense with the players that it was a must-win game? We talked about maybe it's too early, it wasn't even the halfway point of the season, but you don't want to file, fall too behind behind the first-place team. Ben Smith said before the game it was a must-win game, and obviously you know, it worked out for the team at the end. Yeah, no, it, you know, every game we, we consider a must-win game, but especially against a division opponent in our division, the Midwest division, because it's tight, and uh, we don't want to fall too far behind teams, and obviously... You know, losing to them Wednesday night gave us a little bit more, uh, a little bit more hunger. Like, hey, we're not going to let them come. to our building win two games. We're not going to lose back to back at home. Well, as we stand now, the Ice Hawks sit six points behind Rockford, uh, or six points behind Grand Rapids. The division play was kind of a struggle to start the season. Over the last 13 games against the division, however, the Ice Hawks have managed points in nine out of 13. So you've got to think that that turnaround is kind of coming slowly. You may not look at things, you know, week to week and say, all right, well, we had just had a four-game losing streak. Now we've won two in a row. In the grand picture, you know, you're still kind of in the hunt. You're not – the season's yeah, not over. Absolutely. No, the season – it's a long, long season. But, you know, you don't want to let points slip away early in there so that towards the end there you're playing catch-up. And now all of a sudden these are truly must-win, must-win games. It's uh, – you know, we don't want to put ourselves in that position. So uh, we have had a – bit of a streaky team at times where we've won a few in a row, lost a few in a row, but we got to kind of get rid of that and get rid of the, especially the losing streaks in a row. Well, we're officially halfway through the season. I saw 19, 17, 1 and 1, six points behind Grand Rapids. Where is that compared to where the team wanted to be? I know you guys break down the season into segments. I think it's four or five game segments, right? So grand scheme, grand picture, where are the I saws compared to where they should be in your mind and the coaches' minds and where they currently are now? Well, we do break games up into four-game segments, and you know, we do have short-term goals as well as long-term goals. And although we didn't achieve a lot of our segment goals in, with regard to points, we're still our long-term goal is to make the playoffs. And I don't think that's by any means out of the reach of, of this team. And I think that once you get into playoffs, it's a whole new season. And you know, you look at the NHL last year, the AC won. So you know, it's just getting into the, to the dance and then see what happens from there. How would you compare this year to last year as far as the first half goes? Another slow start for the Ice Hogs last year. Uh, 32 points at the halfway point last year, 40 now. So an eight-point improvement is a decent improvement, but you still look at things and say, man, you know, maybe one or two games here and there we kind of let, let go. Yeah, no, we're definitely ahead of where we were last year, and we did get off to a slow start, but it's important just to keep on, uh, on focusing on the road ahead. We're not worried about you – know, there's nothing we can do about that uh, it, games in the past, so it's just focus on uh, the next game and not – letting points slip away, especially as the number of games whittle down. The Ice Hogs were the best team, arguably, in the AHL in the second half last season, and a lot of that was due to Carter Hutton, and obviously you're going to need him in the second half of the season to step up and, and continue playing as well as he has been for the most part this year. But what are the kind of the goals for the team now in the second half? Do you kind of look at it as first half's over now? Let's just be a totally different team and, and continue and continually improve in the second half. No, I don't, I don't think we, we change much up. I mean, our goal as a team and as a staff is to continue to improve every day and I don't think that that changes whether it's the first half or second half I think that you know with the NHL now playing that you know they're going to be some different guys are going to have to fill different voids and step up and elevate their game and you know it's not just going to be Carter Hutton elevating his game and playing well it's going to be all our defense and all our forwards it's going to have to be everyone contributing 
And now you mentioned with the, the lockout now officially being over, seven were recalled the other day, and then Jimmy Hayes additionally called recalled today for training camp. Now we, we expect to see a few of those guys back before Friday's game against Peoria. It, yeah, it's possible that all of them could make the Blackhawks roster, sure, but it's not likely. How does it affect this next coming week of practices? And I know today was supposed to be an off day, and turned out the guys, a lot of the guys ended up skating that were here. Yeah, well, no, it's, it's like that for every team, though. So, I mean, the guys are going to go to camp there, and with the shortened season, they're playing a, a ton of games in a short number of times. So there are going to be plenty of injuries, plenty of uh, sore bodies up top. So and there are going to be plenty of guys that get the opportunity at the NHL level, and if that happens, there are going to be plenty of guys down here that are going to get an opportunity to get more minutes here and to play a bigger role here. Ryan Stanton was one of the guys that was recalled with the first group, and I thought you know, that was great for him. Maybe a guy who was kind of underappreciated as far as Blackhawks prospects go, stay-at-home defenseman, just extremely solid in his own end, and an elite penalty killer, obviously. So it was nice to see him get that call and get the look. And then uh, today the Blackhawks interviewed him and Joel Quenville, and Quenville said he was so impressed with his consistency and how game to game you almost know exactly what you're going to get from Ryan Stanton. I think in all but like seven games this year he's been even plus or minus or better. Yeah, he's been you know, he's steady Eddie. He, you know what you're gonna, just what you said. You know what you're going to get out of him. An honest effort every night. Hard working guy, and he's going to be a guy who sacrifices his body and plays hard for the team. Looking forward to this coming week, Friday night against Peoria. We haven't seen them in quite some time. Uh, that'll be a home game, two home games Friday, Saturday, and then another quick turnaround on Monday. Obviously, Monday technically counts as next week's game, but it's basically three games in four nights. How do you guys prepare for that? Being shorthanded basically all week. Uh, you take it one game at a time, one day at a time, and you figure out who you have, and uh, you drop the best game plan and try and put the players in the best situation to succeed. Obviously, we'll look at the other teams, but it's tough to pre-scout and scout another team when they're gro going through the same thing. So I think it's you know sometimes not a matter of X's and O's. It's just a matter of going out and playing and competing and outworking and out-hustling your opponent. There's a lot of teams just getting harassed right now with their rosters getting cut in half. Chicago the other day, 12 guys got called up by Vancouver in one day. So the next thing you know, now you don't have a team. And we were talking with Ben Yowes last week in Toledo in the ECHL. They're having a lot of the same issues because all the guys who were sent down because of the lockout from the AHL to the East Coast League are now going back up. Toledo was scrambling to find players for a, a three-game road trip in Florida. Yeah, no, it's definitely a, a chain reaction. So we're getting guys called up to Chicago. And then we're taking players from Toledo. And now I can't imagine what you know they're they're doing. So, but it is a, a chain effect, and, and it's kind of it's crazy, but it's you know, it's the nature of the business. How unique of a situation is this? Obviously, a mid-season training camp doesn't happen very often, if ever. And uh, you know, everyone's kind of got to adjust. So, how how are the Ice Hogs? What are they doing to adjust to everything that's going on with the roster changes and just kind of the big picture of getting back to what's normal for the AHL? Yeah, no, well, it's, it's taking it one day at a time. This is kind of a, you know, atypical situation, and we're not used to, you know, a one-week training camp at the NHL level missing seven or eight key guys from our team. So, you know, we're, we're new to this too, so we'll, we'll see how it works out. The nice thing is, if you look at the top five scores for the Ice Hogs, the only two, now it's two, Peary getting called up, uh, and Marcus Kruger are the top five. So you still have Martin St. Pierre and Ben Smith, your top two scores. Obviously, you, you hope that, well, Ben Smith's likely going to get a shot eventually at some point. You're expecting some injuries to happen in a condensed season. Guys are going to get banged up relatively quickly. Who knows, you know, even, even in training camp, guys might get hurt. How do you kind of, uh, you know, look forward to that and say, well, we still have a lot of talent on this team. Now we just kind of reshuffle a little bit and make sure that we stick to our game plan. Yeah, no, we definitely have uh, definitely have still a lot of quality here in our roster. We're not we're not disappointed with call ups. We're excited when the guys get called up to the NHL. That's great for us and it's great for for our team. It's, I mean, that's why we're here. That's why they're here. I mean, they don't want to stay in rock for too long. They want to hone their skills, develop, and become NHL players. So when when that happens, that's great for everyone. The December schedule was uh, relatively light when it came to home games. Now the Ice Hogs have a five-game homestand, so it'll be nice to get some rest, be at home, maybe not on the road for all this hectic AHL, ECHL, NHL chaos. Uh, but in the month of February, you look at that schedule, it's going to be tough. You start off in February with a three-game road trip to Texas against San Antonio, uh, Houston, and Texas, the Stars, and then another road game against Peoria. So you go from five straight home games to four straight road games. Yeah, that's the, the fun of the AHL schedule. But, uh, no, sometimes it's great to get on the road, too, because you're, especially at this time of the year when we have so many new guys, it'll be good to get the whole, you know, we have some new faces, some new guys, and it'll be good to get everyone on the road and a little bit of team bonding and 
and just play games, play hockey. Some of the guys that are returning now, Brandon Svensson, uh, Terry Broadhurst, uh, who am I missing, um, from the CHL came, David Gilbert. So these guys are familiar with the Ice Hogs. They all played last year, at least for, for previous or brief spurts, and were with the Ice Hogs in training camp and early on in the season before getting sent to Toledo. So the continuity is still kind of there. You get guys called up from Toledo, but they've all played with each other before. It's got to be nice down the road. Yeah, the familiarity with the players is great because they know each other, and and guys stay in touch even though they're not playing for Rockford or here in Rockford. They still stay in touch throughout the summer and during the year you know, through emails and phone calls. And you know, guys still check in and keep tabs on each other. So, I mean, it's good for, for us, too, because we know what type of player they are. We know what they're capable of, what their limitations are, and kind of what positions we can put them in. So, you know, it, it's good that we have that familiarity with, with those players. But there you know, there'll probably be some new guys coming in that we have to kind of start from scratch. But every team's going through it. How do you kind of do the mid-season team bonding? Obviously, in the beginning of the year, you had all kinds of outings and whatnot. The team did things off the ice. Do the road trips help with that? Yeah, anytime you, you get a group of 25 men in a confined bus or a plane, or you're, you're, you, have to, uh, you have to adjust, and you, you, it's fun. You know, you're on the road. You guys are playing cards. You're going out to dinner together. They're, they're at the hotel together. So you know, you're kind of forced to, to get to know your buddies and your teammates. So it's, it's always a good thing. Sai, three games in uh, four days coming up. Let's get six points, huh? We'll try. Thanks for the time. Cheers, Sopka. Thanks. All right, that's Ice Hogs assistant coach Ben Simon. We'll be back with more Bud Light Hog Talk coming here on at Onyx Bar and Grill in McChesney Park on Antenna TV 23-2.